Well, we might as well address the elephant in the room, Ted. What's new going haircut? on? No, nah, he's looking good. Well, I don't have to call him names. <laughs> yeah, I did, now I'm my, I'm on pins and needles now. <laughs> I'm about to you leave. do seem off your game. You like uh, Jordan coming back on that injury? No, yeah. this is throwing me off. You guys got me in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> but we're socially distancing. You're away the only. From you. you guys aren't. Because we're the only people that aren't in contact with other people. Don't you, lie. You have a fiance, you got a new dog. Like I don't know where you've been. Zero chance that you're staying in your house twenty four seven. Absolutely zero chance. I mean, I go to Wendy's every now and then, but that's yeah. about it. That's no worse than me going Who's to Wendy. Uh, the it's funny because I was going to say we're allowed to not social distance because we're like a couple. You know, we see each other all the time. But he's he's making runs without you knowing. Now he's oh. making Wendy's runs. <laughs> you know what I feel like right now? You know what's fun? <laughs> Real quick, I I was driving around. I think it was after I, I dropped off a drive here in the morning. I'm like, all right, let me get some breakfast. So I'm like, all right, let me go try out the new Wendy's breakfast. I go, I'm like, oh, I'll just get something light, and I'll just get an iced coffee. So I'm like, oh, do you guys have iced coffee? They're like, yeah, uh, vanilla or chocolate frosty. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even give you an like, you don't have to order the frosty iced coffee. It's just standard at Wendy's. You order an iced coffee, you're getting some frosty in that bitch. That's so funny. I've never had that. Like a good. float? Wait, I thought you just go in there for an iced coffee, and you got a frosty. No, they put their frosty. They put their their, their iced coffee. They put frosty in. No the way, iced really. Coffee. <laughs> It's fucking delicious. I thought they screwed you. Like, you went there just for a coffee, then they give you a frosty, and now you got number four in your pick. That's what I thought. Yeah, they were literally like, okay, uh, chocolate or vanilla. So I drink it black. And Biganator or chicken just, sandwich? Yeah, right. They weren't like, would you like to try our new frosty iced coffee? They just like straight up oh. vanilla or chocolate frosty in well, your you go with? iced coffee. No, it's Life from Long Island, New York. It's time for the Nerd Soup Podcast. Starring... Anthony J.Q. Nash. I don't know what's going on. Teddy. I just called Chief and this is it. Lorenzo Stu Warren. I did sleep on, I did <laughs> yeah. sleep on this movie, literally. And, um... <laughs> Marissa. Go, Spider-Man. Aaron the Nerd Soup Monkey. I wish my dreams came true. And your host, Bo Oliver Blue. She had the cake, too. I was like, what? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Soup Podcast. There we go. We got an old-fashioned Nerd Soup cold opening. And for day- today's pod, we're talking... <laughs> and, and a mess up in the intro. As soon as I mess <laughs> up and I look at Teddy, I'm like, yep, yeah, we're back. We're back to doing things. And uh, we're here to talk about the world of movies, TV, video games. We've got a lot of interesting stories, new movies being made, video game controversies, this and is like the trailers. like third time in a row we got it all. We yeah, got no. movies with some Star Wars. We got uh, TV with some Tiger King and then Last of Us. You got video games. We don't usually hit all the uh, hit all the uh, topics, but Teddy's back, and the uh, news gods blessed us for once in our life. That's 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 what you call a plug, folks. And uh, you can listen to this podcast <laughs> on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, hopefully. And uh, send us your fan questions at nerdsoup 4 u at Gmail, nerdsoup on Twitter, Bo Soup on Twitter, new Twitter for me, Teddy Nerd Soup, Anthony JQ Nash. Sorry, Aaron, put you last there. Nerd Soup Monkey, we're still waiting to get Nash back. Well, you didn't even put Marissa at all, so yeah, we can, I don't feel that shit. I feel like Nash can get bumped for a little bit longer. Well, Nash is always just... His job requires him to see so many people every day. Yeah, that's worse than mine. Man. I'm in a school by myself. Right, at you least know. you are kind of isolated. And with, like, the spirit of, like, essential employees, eh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's mean. Come on. <laughs> Who's going to be here to complain about fan questions? You got a lot of you got a lot of weight on your shoulders here, Ted. No, really? You got to do the work for you don't and do Nash. That Does that mean you have to read comics <laughs> to fill in for Marissa? <laughs> I really don't want to start doing that. No, you have to not watch shows that I recommend to fill in for Marissa. Oh, that's easy. I've been doing that for years. I did years. already. Yeah. Well, look at that. Well, Marissa's the best at it, so you got some competition. <laughs> uh, let's go to our first story. How about that, folks? Taika Waititi will be directing and writing a Star Wars movie. Now, we actually talked about this on the podcast with you. I think you were there for that when it was rumored a couple months ago. But now it's official. It's uh, officially announced on the old Star Wars Twitter feed, and Taika's like, yeah, I'm doing it. That's great news, man. If there's anybody that's going to resurrect Star Wars, it's him. I mean, you see what he did with Thor, and he's no stranger to action comedies. <laughs> And making them good. Yeah, stop playing with your mask, though, because that's definitely picking up on the mic. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at you right now, like... <laughs> I was playing with my beard, but my mask out of the way. Yeah, yeah, just yeah take no, it off. No, no, put on the knee. Yeah, yeah, knee. You're so close to getting 23-19. Monsters <laughs> Inc., everybody comes in, <laughs> tackles him. But he did resurrect Thor, so... I'm excited for it. And he's still working on uh, Love and Thunder, though, right? So this is a, fun, this is a far way around, right? Well, they're both in space, so they're both a bit cosmic, and he directed the finale for The Mandalorian, correct? 
Yeah, he's so, no stranger in there either in Star Wars. Right. It sounded like he had to inject his Taika isms into that episode of TV because he really didn't. And I thought that was the best episode of the series. He did a little bit with the Stormtroopers. He added some levity to the that uh, series in the finale, but even I, with his character too. With right, the, his character Kojo. had the saddest moment of the series. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. So he knows how to get dark. It's weird because do you want him to do his Taika Waititi, his usual uh, style of filmmaking, or do you want him to stick more to what Star Wars is usually have been in this new, I guess, Disney era? I want his, I want his style. Yeah, this I, is why you get him. I th- yeah, I think you get Taika Waititi to add some flavor and some something different into the Star Wars universe, which I hope he does. And there's not a lot of uh, information. I mean, Christy Wilson Carn- uh, Cairns, uh, I think her name is, who was uh, who wrote 1917, is going to co-write it with him. So I mean, 1917 was one of the best movies of last year so there's a lot of potential with this but we really don't know anything about i guess timeline era characters it's just very early stages but i think you bring him in maybe you pair him with kevin feige who was set to produce the star wars movie coming over from marvel and they've worked great together in the past so let them just go to town make something new make something fresh and i don't think you can go wrong there yeah i think disney should take advantage of the crossover potential between the mcu not the franchises crossing over but the talent behind both franchises that there should be no reason why Taika can't just jump from Thor to Star Wars. Take advantage. They're all under the same company. I thought Feige was going to do his own thing because I figured if Feige was on something, it would be announced by now, no? Well, it looks like whatever Feige is going to produce, he's going to have a hand in more so than the Marvel movies because the Marvel movies, he's kind of like a guiding light. But I think if he's going to do Star Wars, it will just be one and it's going to be a, a Star Wars movie that he really wants to see. This is almost like a gift. You know, how, how often would this happen where, like I said, they're under the same umbrella, so it's easy, but it's here's, thank you for the success of running MCU. Have, have a Star Wars as a break <laughs> and then go back to the MCU. It's wild. I think there's a I'd lot like of, to op- see them work together. There's a lot of optimism in the fan base, I think, especially after Rise of Skywalker. And that was a film where people who liked The Last Jedi, people who hated The Last Jedi were either underwhelmed or just plain didn't like the rise of skywalker <laughs> but with the clone war series everyone seemed to be saying that and i need to catch up because people are talking about it like some of the best star wars that was ever produced yes this, they this are last season of the clone wars uh you have the mandalorian coming off a fantastic first season wrapping production uh, production on season two potential obi-wan series this taika watiti movie the other series they're making i think did you hear the rumors about what hayden christensen i did i did for what they're saying Hayden Christensen might reprise his role as Anakin for the Obi Wan series. That'd no, be it's sick. the Ahsoka Tana series, I think. Ooh, that'd be cool too. That'd yeah, be sick. and yeah, I didn't even mention that series. So, I mean, there's a lot of optimism going, and I think with Disney Plus, and you can take a back seat from these big blockbuster movies for a few years, take some time to develop what you want to do with your future, and in the meantime, have some of these great series come out on Disney Plus. Potential cast? Anybody yeah. that any actor or actress you'd like to see in a Star Wars movie? I think from, I would like, let's see, I'm trying to think of his past movies. Aziz? No. Oh, I thought you said Aziz. as Ansari. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> How'd you do that? Is that a little baby moving that with his mind? <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm trying to think back at his past movies, like who would, I would want to see Taika bring along in this Taika. new film. Just yeah. cast himself. Just plays the main guy. I mean, he's going to be in it, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He always gives himself oh, yeah, a cameo. Yeah. I mean, Chris Hemsworth is the biggest name, but even Tessa Thompson from Thor Ragnarok, or maybe some of the crew from Hunt for the Wilder People. Yeah, Julian Dennison. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you, you know what he's great at? He's great at making, like, otherworldly people relatable and, and like, humanized. Oh, yeah, with Korg. Which, imagine Star Wars now, with how many people there are. Well, you can have a field day with the droids. So oh, yeah. You've got a little taste of the Mandalorian, but a CG character like Korg and Meek, and how he was able to create all these wacky characters in Thor Ragnarok and kind of brought a freshness to it. So I think we're all in agreement. Just give him free reign. Let him do what he, yeah, what he does. He's uh, one of the best filmmakers working today. So, Do you guys think if he takes a certain setting or era in Star Wars, it'd be better? Like, I think if he takes on the High Republic era, that'd be better for him. Well, that's like the one era that we've gotten any, I guess, news about. Like, they are going to do the High Republic. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they only have to stick within that era. Maybe they want to center a trilogy around that, but... Give us one-offs in different areas and different timelines. Do you think if they if they were going to go with the Mandalorian, it would have been done already? Like at like after season two, if they were going to do like a movie based off the Mandalorian. I think you keep that on Disney Plus. It's the way this you can have like these little adventures every week, and I think he's made for a series like that. Because they're done doing trilogies, right? Or they're saying they're stepping away from the trilogy. Yeah, that's what they said. That they weren't going to do. I'd like to see if the Mandalorian runs five seasons and then they just give him a movie at the end. That'd be cool. I mean, it looks so good already. But for time, it seems like every time they announce Star Wars, I say I want it in the High Republic or the Knights of the Old Republic. 
But yeah, they said that they were going to do some High Republic stuff. And Star Wars does have precedent for being a little weird and off. So yeah, it, yeah, it's not like if Taika comes in and does something, you know, that we didn't really see in the sequel trilogy um, that it's going to be as jarring because even the original trilogy, there's a lot of wacky things in there. And that's what made those movies kind of great. Yeah, I think that the MCU has kind of put pressure on blockbusters to be funny because that's their style. They'll never miss an opportunity to make a joke. And I think the comedy in The Last Jedi was criticized heavily because the jokes just didn't feel like Star Wars. The first, yeah, the first Star Wars ever is very jokey, but the, the comedy kind of fit the situations. And I think Taika will kind of nail that comedic essence that Star Wars has been lacking since those original movies. I actually it. thought The Force Awakens was the funniest of the new ones. Yeah. Uh, you know you know where I felt the comedy lacked in the new Star Wars? is like, you were pretty much able to predict what they were going to say like because you knew you like you knew what they were going to try and say to be funny right yeah them making uh jokes like that with one-liners yeah the funniest line in the the first star wars is when han solo asks the guy how he's doing when uh he's on the radio it's like <laughs> what's going on up there oh yeah everything's fine how are you he has his feet up on the thing right yeah, the yeah. control panel <laughs> yeah. Um, or when he calls C-3PO a mindless philosopher. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> How dare you call me a mindless philosopher? Uh, but even, like, his episode of The Mandalorian, like we said before, I think that was the perfect type of comedy. Yeah, and it was he, hilarious, man. I was cracking up. <laughs> he's able to adapt, and he's very talented uh, at writing and directing. So, like I said, let him just do his thing, and I think he can make something great. We'll talk about unique letting a guy. Unique, at the very least, unique. Right. I'm glad you made that point, though, because I had a great transition, but it was a good point. I'll... I'll I'm glad the point was made over the transition. What was the transition going to be? Yeah. Well, he was talking about how he's very... Um, I forgot which point you made, but I was going to connect it to Joe Exotic. <laughs> I was going to compare Taika to Joe Exotic. But yes, Taika is very unique. Joe Exotic, Nicolas Cage is playing him in a limited series based on Tiger King. Yes. Did you guys watch Tiger King? I'm yeah. on the last episode, but I get the gist. <laughs> so, I get I the idea. It. I can't stand that this guy is like like popular and popping right now. It, it's fucking insane. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It, it's a it's a crazy crazy fucking television documentary i mean people are talking about it but just the idea of going into this world of like big cats and the selling and the zoos they make i mean that, that stuff is all interesting but just all the characters that are introduced and the everyone just crazier than the next it really is something you know something unique <laughs> you know what's so funny about that show like the girl that got her arm bit off she goes back to work the next day i think i called out of work because i like I just didn't feel like going in. <laughs> like she, I had like a sore throat. She's, like, a yeah, I know. Worker. she's yeah. ride or die. She didn't say one bad thing about no. Joe Exotic. Um, you always need like a Doug Stamper in your life. If you're yeah. going to be crazy, <laughs> just the guy who's completely committed, completely committed to the to the wackiness. She gets but, bit in the arm. Is like, ah, just patch me up. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> I need my eight hours. I haven't seen it. My cousin Cam told me to just throw it on in the background when I'm working. That's what I something. do. Yeah. I just throw it on. It's not something you really need to pay attention to. It's just like I watch it like watch. twenty minutes at a time, but I eventually finish all the episodes. <laughs> I do have to be the activist here. Stop putting these cats in zoos. It's ridiculous. Yeah, do you but guys, even the like? It's weird. Even the professional ones that do it right. At the end of the day, just leave them in the wild, man. Well, they were saying like the the person Carol Baskin who owns like the sanctuaries. They're like, oh well, she kind of does the same thing. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, no, yeah, well yeah. that's where the yeah. well that's where the thing. That's where the whole drama is because he's breeding them and she and because he just wants the cubs. And then when they get older, he just ditches them. And then Carol Baskins gets the ones that he ditches. So it's just like he's mass producing big cats because he wants the kittens. So like the when they're young and then she gets older ones as he's di that, that, that he's ditching out. So why is she going after him? There's a symbiotic relationship here, keeping each other in business. She's well, overpopulated. Well, he also like, doesn't treat oh. them well. Well, he's overpopulated her. Right. <laughs> feeding them like old mead and yeah, killing yeah. them. They and starve them for like three to four days and then yeah. feed them. It's, it's the whole the whole thing's fucked. Let them watch South Park. It's like adult. All right, we need someone who can capture all this madness <laughs> yeah, and yeah, this him. just wackiness. Let's get Nicolas Cage, the now, dullest the guy in the world. The thing is, <laughs> I don't I don't think Nicolas Cage can actually capture Joe Exotic because I I don't know if he's definitely wacky, but they're just I don't know if he can nail it, but. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a hell of a fun time trying to see him try. A lot of people <laughs> wanted Danny McBride on Twitter It's, it's perfect. It's well, literally said, the perfect casting. They said Dak Shepard, yeah. uh, David Spade. Dave Spade, yeah. I mean, he looks like him. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's supposed to be a series produced by CBS, eight episodes. Oh, all access? I'm never getting this. 
Is it all access? I'm never going to see the doc or this. So <laughs> if it's CBS, if CBS is doing something like this, you would think, ah, uh, maybe, maybe they put it on network television. It's so popular. Maybe. It doesn't feel like a network television show though, maybe because you, you have to go rated R, right? Yeah, I think you have to go rated R. I mean, there's a lot of fucking crazy shit that goes on here. But this seems like something that would benefit their streaming service. Yeah. If they want to prop it up. Well, it's being produced, so I don't know. I guess, obviously, then it has to go to one of their networks. <laughs> They're like, right? you know what, Netflix? Well, I'm trying to think. <laughs> you take this well, one. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to think if. Uh, <laughs> we we'll flip the bill. Do they have any other, like, like Fox has FX, so if Fox produced something right. and they, they can have put TNT, it on. I think. I feel like this show belongs on TNT. <laughs> TNT Jeez. needs a. TNT's doing a Snowpiercer series. Yes, they are with uh, Jennifer Lilly, right? Yeah, and I was watching uh, Rush Hour 2 on TNT yesterday, actually. Good and movie. one of the commercials was, um, what movie do you want to see this Saturday night? Go and vote. And the choices were Suicide Squad and Justice League. Eesh. You don't have anything better? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a C? I think they were going to do like a TNT all-time greatest. <laughs> Can we get a church episode in there? <laughs> <laughs> I hate watching a basketball game on TNT and then waking up at 4 a.m. to some creepy-ass <laughs> fantasy show that they're making. <laughs> like, Either that or you wake up to the to the, uh, like the deacon like in the fucking huge-ass stadium trying to preach and he's trying to do <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's that or um, like late-night... Um, like the Slap the Trap Network. Oh, no, ESPN, just seeing sports. The out. Magic Bullet or the Slap Trap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, every time I watch one of those, I'm like, I need this. <laughs> but I, I no, really don't. That's do you guys, me too, yeah. Do you guys think, like, these big cats in the cage, like, they ever just, like, nah, he's the boss. Let's fucking get him when he comes into the cage. Or, like, is it just, like, a great, like, th- do they know that he's, like, a dad? <laughs> like, their dad? Because I'm always fascinated how they don't eat them. They always <laughs> say like, that how? sometimes cats, lions, they had that video of the guy who raised those lions, let them out in the wilderness, and then he reunited with them yeah. a couple of years later, and they knew who he was. But they always say that there's a moment where they could snap, and it doesn't even matter the relationship well, that you have Well, it's even if they're them. just trying to play, and it's a full-grown lion, you know? Yeah, they're play bike and rip your face off. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's, I mean, countless stories of people who train lions, had relationships with them for years, and then they were killed because the lion tried to eat them because it was hungry one day and just thought, oh, meat. Well, it's like, um... They're fucking wild animals. Simon and... <laughs> not Simon and Garfunkel. Who were the Vegas magicians that the lion and attacked one? Mike Tyson and... Oh, no, uh... <laughs> What's their names? Uh, and something with a P. Simon, uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. One was always quiet, right? One was a mute. <laughs> yeah. Penn and Gillette, or what is it? I don't know. But... Uh... Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller, they have. Magicians, but... No, it was... Penn and Teller, the magicians. I don't know. You're the big magician fan. You should know. I mean, what's this one of my magician? I like magician I comedy. Oh, you, you, Yeah, apparently you love magicians. <laughs> Are you a magician? No, it's an S and an R. The first name's an S and the other name's an R. Can you do get you, it? Do you have it? Yeah, I have it right here. Sigmund... Uh, Siskel and Ebert. Oh, no, it's no. I know. Um, I don't know. The second name's Roy. You can get the first one if you get Roy. Siegfried and Roy. Yeah. And Roy, yeah. <laughs> they had a white tiger. Wait, didn't the tiger eat one of the guys? Yeah, that's, what I, that's why I brought it up. Right, okay, <laughs> full circle. Yeah. Wow, look at that. You know what I love? I love in uh, Kirby Enthusiasm when Larry's nephew is a magician and he won't <laughs> teach him the trick. It's like, because you're not a magician. He's like, who taught you the uh, the trick? It's like, a magician. It's like, therefore, you weren't a magician. It's like, yeah, but he knew. <laughs> well, you guys think Nicolas Cage saw his come across his desk and he's like, that's me. I'm well, he that. apparently says that for everything. Yeah. He sees uh, any movie come across. He's like the, what was that, where he played the witch guy? It's like the last witch trainer. So, yep, that's me. He's um well, also a national treasure, I think, just before we started this. I don't, I'm going to make the list, but three is going to happen, and they're also going to make a Disney Plus series. No shit. A national treasure? <laughs> yeah. With him in it? I, I don't know if he's going to be in it. Maybe I'll take three. Off, but I'll take three. I hope it's a cartoon. Yeah, I'll take three, and then I want the series to be like an animated cartoon. With his dad before him doing it. Yo. Is that established in the movies? Yeah, his dad was a treasure hunter before him. Of course him. he was. Who he's plays so he's the like dad? Indy. What? Who plays the dad? I forget. Some no, in the series. In the oh. spinoff. Oh, I don't Potential know. spinoff. Nicolas Cage? That's not on mine. No, you can't. Know. He's no, you, yeah, you can do that. You can, like in cartoons. <laughs> I got the, the ideas, ancestors. man. I'm not, you know. I'm You're I'm not, not a big casting big. director. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah, like Peter Griffin's like my great-grandfather. Right, yeah. It's just another Griffin, Nicholas. and it's just Peter. <laughs> Who could, who's an actor right now that can capture a 30-year-old Nicolas Cage? Like, that's Nicolas Cage's daddy. John Ralphio? Ben Schwartz? I don't know. Who's, uh... You know, I told him. <laughs> He's just so unique. I don't know. I think you just go to the opposite, and that's kind of like a joke. There's a message on the back of the in- Declaration of Independence. Okay, so so you go like completely opposite opposite of Nicolas Cage. Yes. So like, um, was that close? Did no, you guys- that was awful. <laughs> no, we're like over here trying to talk <laughs> over you with castings. 
I don't know. The guy who runs the hotel in John Wick. That's yeah. just Nicholas Cage's dad. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, let's move on to The Last of Us 2. It seems guy? like <laughs> it seems like every time we talk about The Last of Us 2, yeah, <laughs> um, there's some new controversy surrounding this game that was highly anticipated to one of the sequel to one of the greatest games of all time. But yeah, now every time we talk about it, it's kind of disappointing. But Naughty Dog is saying that their leak came from an outside source, an outside hacker who used something from one of their previous games to get into their systems. Um, it was previously believed to be a Naughty Dog employee. Also, they released a new gameplay story trailer which was kind of incredible, but they're also blocking and copywriting videos on YouTube that are about the Naughty Dog leaks, and they're also turning off the comments and likes on their videos. So <laughs> well, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Well, with the copy, I think uh, some of the channels, they got copyrighted when their strikes. So I don't know. It's a, it's a weird situation because this game was so anticipated, and just to have this happen and people not necessarily like the leaks or the script. or I, I really haven't looked at any of these videos, looked at any of the leaks or anything, because I just want to play the game, and that's how I want to experience it. Then I'll judge from there. So I don't know if these YouTube channels were showing any of the leaks. If they were just talking about the story, like we talked about the story, then that's ridiculous, because it's a new story. You can't copyright that. But even if they were talking some of the spo- about some of the spoilers, if I guess if you tagged it correctly and made it known it's a spoiler so you don't have some unsuspecting person get spoiled by watching your video then i guess that's fine too but yeah but your company all, fucked up and let it get out you know you didn't protect yeah. your shit good enough and now so, it's out that's, that's, that's not on us so if they're not showing the footage and they're just talking about it then i don't think that there's need to copyright. are we getting copyrighted now <laughs> it could be in the midst of a copyright yeah. <laughs> yeah we won't know yet but the turning the comments and likes off i get that because you don't want people to spoil the game in the comments for other people so i think you have to protect your property as much as you can at this point. So I get why they're kind of trying to do the most to stop any further leaks or people talking about it. But I think there's a way to handle it where you can still not just restrict everything that has to do with this game coming out. Yeah, going to the gameplay trailer, it looks incredible. This was one of the best trailers I think I've ever seen for a video game. That's, yeah, that's really the worst smooth. part, because people are so down on the story, and they say it's bad, and all these other stuff. But I'm starting to think mm-hmm. that there's something that happens... There's did a, you watch it? The trailer? Yeah. Yeah, well, I did. Did you? You watched the leak and all that? No, no, I haven't seen. I haven't read any of the leaks. I don't know anything about the leaks. Can I say what I read... What no. are, what they think is what what it's what like they they compare it's a theory to on what they think is going to happen. No, not not with the story. It's just like a comparison. Okay. What I've read is that. Whoa! What are you doing, man? You guys said I can say that's it. a leak. No, it's not a compare. Oh, that's... cut that. Edit that. Listen, Please, don't, don't give me a green light. Bring you back. We gave you a green light to. We, we just, just said just, we didn't want to hear any spoilers. And we just said they're copyright. It was a comparison. More importantly, it wasn't a comparison. That was just a straight up. Ah, oh, you fucking suck, dude. I figured you guys watched it since it was on the fucking topic, so I don't know what to tell you. Um, well, let's go to the let's go to the trailer. Did you watch the trailer, the yeah. gameplay trailer? Yeah. Did you like it? I did. It looks good, right? I don't see anything good. wrong with it. Well, that's it the th- intense. It's like, well, that's the thing. If like vicious, some of the story points don't necessarily hit. I mean, the game itself. I don't think if it's going to be the same gameplay and I guess expand on the gameplay of the first game, that's still going to be fucking like fun as shit you're still gonna have a good time crawling around gathering resources and killing zombies but they're saying it's so far from that from that game is what what i'm trying to say thinking of your comparison i've also heard that comparison made to another game the same thing the same story with this game the game was very well received by critics but because of one choice they made fans don't look back on it too fondly and i wonder if this game is just a it's it's almost like luke skywalker in the last jedi right yeah it's like Last exactly. Jedi. A lot. How many times have you heard? I think it's a good movie. It's not a yeah. good Star Wars movie. <laughs> okay, yeah. I always said The Last of Us didn't need a sequel. I always thought it had a perfect ending. But at the end of the day, we're going to get a sequel to a game whose gameplay was magnificent. And mm-hmm. this is five years later. All the improvements they've made on gameplay. That one shot of the dude that tells Ellie, uh, I hope this works out for you or whatever, I thought that was a real guy. So the <laughs> graphics are looking incredible. The gameplay has always been great for this franchise. So I don't know. It's fun. I'm I'm excited to see if, what's all the controversy about. I, is it? I, I can't I, wait I'm, to play it. I'm waiting for it just to be like a masterpiece. Did Naughty well, Dog no, just like something so minor? And that that's what I'm afraid of. of. It's going to be something so stupid. Is this a possibility though? Did first did Naughty Dog confirm this? Confirm all these leaks and uh, yes. say that they were true? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was just going to say like this disgruntled employee could have just. 
put some true facts and then fibbed some other stuff to make it look like it was all real, you know? Oh, I bet they wish that's what happened. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And them saying that they know that it's not an employee, I mean, being hacked by your own employee would never be a good look. So I guess they would admit it if it was true. So at the end of the sucks day. sucks for them, man. But yeah, because they, they, that, you almost become, that's a good way to become the victim in this situation. It's I don't one feel of bad our employees for them. They're still going to make millions us. over it. Right. That's the <laughs> other thing. They're, they're a company that's been in the news for overworking their workers for a long time. So it's not like Naughty Dog is some, I mean, they're a brand. Yeah. And like all brands, they're focused on making money but they do make very good products and the people behind these franchises are very inspiring creators but i don't know I, I'm, I'm so excited i've i'm even more excited to play it now <laughs> yo seriously that makes it like as much negativity movies and tv shows and games get it makes you makes me want to play it more because i want to see if i really feel the same way it's like it's like no press is good press man that's fucking rude of that well it's like if it was if it uh, came any out, press is good press right no press do you think this is going to help their sales i think so i don't know i think I really have no sense of... If they're saying it's this bad, people will just get it <laughs> just to see it. Yeah, because like, I'm trying to stay away from everything, but right, right, some right. of the stuff I've seen was like um, people saying they're not going to get the game. That makes no sense, man. It's, I, don't know, I, hope it's, I hope it comes out and everyone's like, oh, this is awesome, and other people are like, oh, it sucks. I, I, we need some more of that in this world where people are just going at each other's throats online <laughs> nonstop. You know, remember, remember how fun it was with The Last Jedi? Fun. So, sarcasm, Ted. Oh. <laughs> you think the world's getting too chummy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, No. We'll have to wait and see. What is it, June now? July? June 19th. June 19th. Well, coming before that, in May, we have the... Uh, the uh, <laughs> I'm finishing the game this weekend. Wow, you just caught my great stutter there. Yeah? Yeah. Did you start it? Yeah. And how many hours into Dune are you now? Seven. Wow, look at that. It's good, right? It's fucking amazing, dude. <laughs> I can't wait to finish this. It's funny, me and Aaron dominated Game of Thrones, now me and Ted are going to dominate Dune. Aaron's going to be the new Ted. I like that. Outside looking in, stumbling <laughs> like over this. names, yeah. plot lines. I think I'll be able to pick it up. <laughs> Aaron's already read the book. I know. By next pod. I texted Bo <laughs> and I was like... Gave me the book last year. I texted Bo and I said, imagine Aaron finds out that I finished his book before him. You know how fast he's going to fucking read this thing? <laughs> <laughs> where is that book that I that I lent you? I have it. Yeah, no, but, but where? My apartment. Oh, yeah? Okay, yeah. Because I thought it was in your car. I brought it in eventually. I <sighs> can't wait to look at the binding of that book. Can you? <laughs> that poor, poor book. Not even being read. You can honestly sit down and flip through the pages of that book and read it. Either of you. Any book. You, I, I physically can't do it. People actually read? I physically can't do it. <laughs> I flip think that's what's so fascinating about audiobooks is that, you know, Ted's knocking out like three hours at a time. Yeah. But he would never be able to read a book. No. But it's the same thing. But is it's it not. Though? It's not. It's I don't it. read that fast, though. And, and like... I comprehend it so much better when someone else is reading because, you know, they're saying the words right. They're reading. But the are you paying right. attention fully the whole time when you're yeah, listening? Or I have are you to. wandering off into space? No, I'm paying attention. See, no, but I found I found myself wandering a lot when I read and I having to reread because I, I'm like, wow, I just wasn't even focusing on what I was reading. Let me read that page. I'm not again. saying the whole time. If I catch myself not focused, I'll go back to where I remember. Well, it's like a different way of learning, you know? You'd rather it be spoken to you than shown to you. That's yeah. that's really what it is. But now, do I say I, you, I you read Dune? You can easily Dune? focus on somebody's speak. Yeah, I think so. I read Dune, right? Yeah. Or do I got to put in, like, is it an asterisk that I listen to it? It counts, dude. You're you're visualizing the story in your head as this person tells it to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you're reading it. Which is and very it counts. good at. Yes, it's, that's why I love audiobooks, because they're bringing in people who normally wouldn't ever read. And that's why it's fantastic. How many books have you knocked out in the past couple of years on audiobook? Three. You know, three or four? Three. But that's, <laughs> hey, man, come on. That's compared to zero. Come on. How many have you done? <laughs> Bitch. Audiobook? Or oh, real book? 10, 15? <laughs> 10, 15 books. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't know what I do. <laughs> I know for a fact you brag about how you don't read books. And now you're Mr. Book. I'm Mr. Now book. you have a little clip that pops up on the Microsoft Windows thing. <laughs> He's the paper clip. He's the paper clip. <laughs> you think you're an intellectual. How did you come up with that just now? Because <laughs> he looks like the paper clip. That's a throwback, dude. <laughs> Does the Affinity Gauntlet count? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a graphic novel. <laughs> this has been such a great pod so far. Um, <laughs> Can you apologize to me? No. For laughing in my face for reading three books? Well, okay. Then, I'll, you know, if you're telling the truth, then I'm proud of both of you. All right, that's all I care about. I don't need you. <laughs> I don't need your acceptance. Maybe 15 is a little. I think around <laughs> eight or nine. <laughs> This man caught the fish and he's telling the story. I was there when you caught it. I wasn't. I was at home. Yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> Me watching you while you read? Would you rather do that or watch? I can watch you while you sleep. The Dunkin' Eggs. 
Those are short novellas. Let's move on to the first trailer for Steve Carell's new show, Space Force. <laughs> Only getting watched because it's on Netflix. And because I like Steve Carell. Well, that's not enough for me. You're not watching it? <laughs> because it's on Netflix? Yeah. No. Do you like Steve Carell? I'm uh, one of the th- only people at this podcast that don't thing session who hasn't seen all of The Office. Oof. I do love Steve Carell. I think he's a he's a great comedic actor. I think he's proven to be a good dramatic actor as well. And this series impressed me because I thought it was just going to be Space Force exists and it's like stupid and wacky, but it's kind of taking the approach that it's it's such a stupid concept. But let's see if it could work as both an actual government agency and Is a how- TV show. <laughs> Was this how NASA got perceived when, like, it first got, like, funding and all this shit? Like, people didn't, like, want to go into space? Like, you think it's, like, a play on that? Yeah, I think I think they could do that. I think that would be smart to make those parallels. Because there's often discussion about, are we overfunding NASA? Is that necessary? Why are we exploring space? We should be exploring. I heard, I heard it was underfunded, not overfunded. That NASA was underfunded. No, yes. Yeah, so to somebody, like, if, if you support NASA, I would say it's underfunded. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. But there are people who think, you know, it's, it's not even necessary, the funding that they right. get. That much funding. Mm-hmm. Well, especially back in the day when the whole space race was going on. They needed, like, a... I needed the Russians to make a space force in the series. You think there's a competing space force? We gotta run it there back. There always is. There has to be. <laughs> we gotta run it back. Uh, I thought the trailer was... It looks pretty funny. It looks good. I mean, Steve Carell, he... Did Germany really say run it back on a world war? <laughs> 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 All right, we're home this time. <laughs> Let's run that back. <laughs> Y'all come to us. <laughs> <laughs> we just signed Hitler to a 10 year deal <laughs> <laughs> that man said he really convinced them that they could come back and win this like one up to they went up too well <laughs> they <laughs> got up to an early yeah. lead they took home court advantage yeah I mean I love Steve Carell this looks pretty funny uh, I think I'll definitely give it a watch especially if it's like a half hour 10 episode limited series Malkovich looks like kind of the guy who's the true connoisseur of space if that's the word for them <laughs> i wonder if like they're neil degrasse wonder if they're gonna like actually explore some space in this because everything we got was really ground like ground level rockets blowing up and shit yeah so i wonder if they're actually gonna get like into space and they're gonna get like well was that that one scene where the guy running on that planet or was that just like in a desert no he looked like he was on the moon so did i yeah i thought was it i thought the same thing no it looked like he was just in a desert somewhere I yeah. thought it could have been Mars, but Mars has yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, well, it looks like they're going with modern capability. I think we just got to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only uh, thing I really I watched a trailer this morning, and the re- only thing that stuck with me was him singing the song. Yeah, that was funny. Down to Coco. That's where I left. You called me left into that. <laughs> well, it's funny because Ted had to watch the trailer before we recorded and just wasn't laughing at anything. So I'm like, Dan, sounds like Ted really likes it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it looked, um, I like Ben Schwartz playing Nicolas Cage's father in the National Treasure spinoff, so. Um, <laughs> Is that confirmed? No. But, however, what else was I going to say about the show? Oh, it looks like, um, I liked when he mentioned about how we haven't been back to the moon, because that's a big talk, you know? We haven't been back to the moon since the 70s. Some people think we've never even been there, so. Teddy. I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Did you watch that conspiracy thing on Netflix? Each episode is a different conspiracy, and the first one is the moon landing. How it no, was shot in it, like a studio. Is it a Netflix original though, or is it some show they picked up from like 2004? 2004. 2004. <laughs> conspiracy show. <laughs> is it hosted by Jesse Ventura? It's a, there's a host. <laughs> I don't know who it is. It's though. gotta be Jesse Ventura. I know he did a conspiracy show once. Looks promising for Netflix, at least. I don't know. I mean, the Tiger King original series uh, that got insanely popular. But other than that, they had Extraction this year, which I just watched last night. Pretty good. Fun action movie. Actually, you said pretty good, but you shrugged and you looked disappointed. I mean, there's literally no characterization in the whole movie, but the stunts are fantastic, and I think that's, that's pretty cool that <laughs> more. I like the ending too. I think it's pretty cool that more stunt people are getting to direct. We saw that with John Wick and how great the action was with this, and the action in Extraction is fantastic too. Yeah, it's kind of like they finally have a chance to have no restrictions and do all the crazy shit that they've always wanted to do. So. I mean, even if you're going to sacrifice, like, character development and things like that, if you just make a fun, entertaining, high-octane action movie with Chris Hemsworth, that's going to get you a seven any day of the week. Yeah, and I know the the Russo brothers brought in the stunt guys from Raid to help them with the airport scene for Civil War, so I wonder if those... If those stunt guys, or if the guy who directed Extraction was one of those stunt guys. He did, no, he worked with them in the past. Okay, yeah, so, so no, yeah, I mean, Raid, one of the best action movies, obviously, I've commended the Russo brothers for so long with their action. Yeah, no, it's cool, David Leach and Chad Stahelski are the John Wick guys, right? And now they're just full-blown fucking directors out here. Yeah, I think it was pretty popular, too, I think a lot of people saw Extraction, so, I mean, Netflix... I wish Upgrade would have came out on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, that would have been perfect. Would have been perfect, man. It would have made that guy the, what do they call him, Diet Tom Hardy? Would have made him a star. 
because so, he's so good in it. Well, and what it's did such they say film. about a few months ago about their contact going forward? How they were going to try to focus on, I guess, Netflix. Yeah, they were going to change the way they produce content. Like they wanted focus more on, I think, things that'll be more popular and get more viewers there. So I think they were selling out. Is that the goal, though? Kind of. <laughs> But oh, so just like putting everything out now, they're gonna try and well, right now because could be more selective. But yeah. we may be in the golden age of Netflix, yeah, because right now they're producing a lot of shows that are just really well written dramas. Well, I so they want more Michael Bay. I want more Roma than Marriage Stories, though. I don't know. I know, no. Well, Netflix is going to be looking at what sells, and I'm always saying, oh, TV is great because people are attracted to these really well written stories, but maybe. That just because that's what there is. And if Netflix does transition to exclusively producing blockbuster-type shows and movies, then we might forget about those great dramas that we all loved. I got a question. Who do you guys think spearheaded the A-list actors on Netflix? Like, who, who do you think was, like, like, the first A-list actor that hit the Netflix? I Kev- think McConaughey. Kevin Spacey, probably, with House of Cards. Right. Well, I, I'm looking back. at, like, in just in yeah. general, what brought TV, uh, movie stars to TV. Yeah. But for Netflix, yeah, Spacey and House of Cards. One of the earlier ones. Way to go, Netflix. <laughs> McConaughey on True Detective was one where it was like, what is this movie star doing on TV? Right. Well, uh, movies, like movie star on TV, yeah. The That's... Rock Ballers? Highest paid movie star in the world on Ballers, 30-minute HBO comedy. That <laughs> got canceled, basically. <laughs> that was How long ago was Maniac with Jonah Hill? And, uh, Only no, a couple of years. A year or two was ago, it? yeah. I'm waiting for... I feel like that was the real breakthrough because it was like A-list actors here and there and then Jonah Hill hit it and then like everyone started doing well, it. That wasn't that popular of a show. Um, well, Which is even weirder. I think The <laughs> Rock, he's going to do a Netflix movie with the director of Skyscraper. Right. And Will Smith did a Netflix movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. Brad Pitt with War Machine. Brad Pitt, right. So, and I think they're saying, uh, there are was it Killers A-list of the actors. Flower Moon, that movie, the Scorsese Ryan film? Reynolds now. That might be Netflix? It, possible. With Ooh. Leonardo DiCaprio. I was just going to say, when is Leo? It's just, I swear to God, before Go I said my question, I was going to say the Leo thing. That is what's going to kind of, I think Scorsese already did it with The Irishman, but Leo oh, yeah, coming yeah, over. I forgot about The Irishman, yeah. Um, Leo and Scorsese on Netflix would solidify them, and then they turn around and sell out. Imagine that. Did you guys see Six, Un- Six Underground with Ryan Reynolds? No, I didn't. Did you? Yeah. How it, was it? It was good. I heard mixed things. I heard it was funny. Ron yeah, Reynolds is good. He was but. funny in it. He's so good, it was, man. It was literally, it was, uh, it was fucking Deadpool. Right. <laughs> on Netflix. Well, see, he's an actor that needs, I need him in better movies because I think he's on tap potential. He is. I think he's so good comedically that, like, I, I wish he would get the roles that Ron Gosselin gets. And I like Ron Gosselin. I think he's a good actor, but I think Reynolds would kind of just thrive. Like, I'd love to see him take on something like that is First deadly. man? Yeah. Just a deadly serious Ryan Reynolds. Wasn't I think he, now it, it, would, it would be hard to see, but I think he could pull it off. What was that movie he did with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal? Life? Yes. Yeah, I think so. And also, um, I forget the other movie he did. I don't want to see Ryan Reynolds in La La Land. No, he, La could, La 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 he could play it, though. <laughs> I, I could see him in Blade Runner 2049. I don't know. I guess maybe because we don't see him in that many. It's hard to picture him in those real type of roles. But well, You just don't see it like I do. <laughs> All right, we'll I'm sure see. you would have said the same thing about Sandler a couple of years ago. Ryan Reynolds needs an uncut gems. Uncut, je- yeah, something like that, but a classical dramatic role. Yes, I think he could pull it off. You, you underrate I'd love actors. To see him. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I would like to see it, but I don't know if it, I would go as far as replacing don't think he Ryan, him at Ryan Gosling. He's not convincing when he gets dark and dramatic in Deadpool. I think in he, other films. I think Bo yeah, he's was, a very good actor. I'm not, don't get me wrong. I think I'm Bo was just about, saying I'm, that he wouldn't mind seeing him in those roles, not replacing him, like saying he'd do it better. Well, no, I'm also trying. Well, I think he would do it better. Well, I think you're taking shots at Gosling, and I don't like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that appreciate it at all. I think that Gosling sometimes I wish he would bring more to his characters. Sometimes they feel a little lifeless. Maybe that's just the characters he's playing. That's his face. <laughs> he does have a very... <laughs> Ryan Reynolds has a great face. A lot of facial movements. A lot yeah. of tics. Good looking. Good looking. Great voice. Hmm. I wonder what type of... Um, who'd you pair him Like with? when Ryan Reynolds is down and out in Deadpool 2, when he's in jail and he's just yeah, he's a good, set with very, dying. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. He gets dark. Yeah. And he's convincingly evil in those scenes with Julian Dennison. No, he's very good. I never said he wasn't, but just don't take shots at Gosling ever again. Not even when you're... <laughs> Not even when you're all alone, left with your thoughts, just thinking about Ryan Aaron, Reynolds and other movies. Aaron knows. Or Gosselin. Me just, the yeah. face is slowly changing to Ryan Gosselin. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, and then it changes to you. Just don't do it. And you're just like, stop, stop, get some help. You guys want to go to fan questions? Yeah.
That's for the fan to decide. Yay! People, you call up to the show, you better be ready. That's what you're supposed to do. Sitting there arguing and trying to spell your name and all of this other stuff. It's not your show, it's my show. I'm giving you the, the opportunity to speak your mind. Don't call up here unless you got something to say. You guys see Giannis being hacked? Mm-hmm. That's always the hack you wanted, right? He got hacked? Giannis? No, but that style of hack, where it's not totally ridiculous. It's, like, believable. No, it wasn't believable at all. Some of them were. Yeah, it, 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 some of them were. Like, my manager made me play, I got corona. No, it wasn't believable. It was obvious. For, like, I always say when people... So how like, would you hack Giannis? When celebrities... Got, I wouldn't hack, but if, so, if celebrities... <laughs> Don't defend yourself like you're going to do it. You can say No, but celebrities do. and hack. people get hacked and they just get spammed with like 20 tweets in like 10 minutes. And if you were That's gonna, when it's fake. If you were going to hack Giannis, yeah. you would say, I want out of Milwaukee. And that's the only tweet you sent. Yeah. He did send one of those. But, but then he sent all the other All ones. the other yeah, tweets. Yeah. And, but know, I wouldn't say like that. I'd make it seem like, you know, I'm not feeling Milwaukee anymore, really. I'm not feeling this. Kind of what I said. No, but I mean, you said you want out. I'm just saying I'm not feeling it. But it's like these people get hacked and then they send all these tweets and it's like, oh, he's hacked. But if you really want to stir shit up, you know, hack LeBron and say, I or want, talk shit to another I want out of LA. That's it. And people will believe it. And then it's a whole thing. If I'm going to hack someone, I'm talking shit to, to another another guy on that guy's Twitter. You would start a fake beef. Yes. I'm all about fake beefs. If I was, if I was a celebrity, like if all of us are known celebrities, like I text you guys on the side and say, "Let's start a beef." Do you think people do that? A hundred percent. That was always the thing with rappers. I was just, gonna, I think rap beefs. I think I feel like half of them are fake. Yeah, well, it's like rappers. all the YouTube like diss tracks. Remember when that was a thing and boxing <laughs> <Yeah>. fights? <laughs> I wish that would come over to like the movie and TV world where we can just Ooh. be like, "Hey, Charlie from Emergency Awesome, meet me in the ring," and you know, get paid. I guess is that, <laughs> that? It's just a Wii Fit boxing match. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> We should create this beef. Or... Well, that's why I love... um Makes money, man. Marketing. M- watching Michael Jordan on The Last Dance, all of his beefs are completely genuine. He, I've never seen a more honest athlete. Like, when they're talking about the book, Jordan Rules, about all the inside information in their locker room, and everyone's like, it could have been the players, could have been the coaches, goes to Jordan. It was Horace. <laughs> completely <laughs> rats out his teammate. Holding grudges from 30 years ago with Steve Kerr in practice because Phil Jackson was favoring him with ticky-tack fouls. <laughs> he's telling the story like he's genuinely pissed. We need real beefs like that, not these fake manufactured ones. That's what that's what Kobe brought. <laughs> yeah, so so similar, those two. Um, Let's go to fan questions here. This one here from Zoe at Zoe with an extra Y, 227. Um, what video game would you, lo- would you want to be made into a movie? Tetris? <laughs> They're alive. It's not gonna fit. They're alive. Like Turn the, it. The Family Guy thing. I <laughs> He's the square. He's the straight line. He has like a whole gap. I'll just sit down right here. <laughs> uh, video game into a movie. Uh, I demoed God of War. That looked pretty good. Is that a movie? Is there a movie on God of War? No, no, no there isn't. I wouldn't mind God of War. Well, we always say TV is the best place for video games. It's just a yeah, a better yeah. medium to flesh out the characters better flesh out the characters hit all the story points and just make it feel like an actual journey because i think a lot of the best games that you play it's a journey and you that's why this what brings you back and this is what makes you stay there for hours just to play because you just get encapsulated in this world and with a two-hour feature you don't really get that you lose that part of what makes games so great so like the witcher did even though i think the witcher could have been a little better but it was still a very solid adaptation i think and part of that was the 10 episode storyline 10 hours to build this world and the characters i really enjoyed the witcher thinking back on it i gotta watch that it was fun yeah it was fun i always said that nintendo should do something to make those 90s games into animated kids films i would love to see a banjo kazooie computer animated yeah smash brothers kind of like a mortal Kombat. yo that'd be sick a (laughs) universal tournament with all those characters the rights would be tricky but i think they could get it done i think those games would be perfect for like a nintendo cinematic universe do mario 64 zelda banjo do you think if speaking of last of us from earlier fuck if this game does come out and it bombs and you think that affects the hbo series at all I don't think so because I think it's it's going to be maybe it does but it's it's being sold as a, an adaptation of the first game or even I don't even know if it's a direct adaptation it kind of it's kind of feeling like a like a retelling the things that I've heard about it gotcha. but I I don't think so cuz I don't think it's going to bomb I think it's it's not as popular as say like a Call of Duty where the numbers the the drop off would be so dramatic I mean if it keeps pace with the sales of the first game and critically I I maybe just call me optimistic I don't think it's going to be that bad I don't, yeah. think, I don't think critics are going to come out and slam it. It's kind it. of like a Star Wars and maybe even a Game of Thrones situation where you're used to, with Star Wars, I guess, the original trilogy, we'll put that there, but uh, you're used to perfection where 
you want it to be a, a nine or a ten, and if you get a six or a seven, it just amplifies it so much where it's it still might be good, but you're not. It's not up to the standard. Therefore, I don't like it at all. Yeah, it's it's almost what do you want now in, in today's world? Do you want the six or the seven, or do you want a controversial nine? Because it feels like the controversial nine is almost worse now. Because that's what the last Jedi was. I mean, look at the critic scores for The Last Jedi. Critics loved it. They were like, oh, this is good. What's next on my slate of movies that I need to watch for the <laughs> rest of the year? And then the fans hated it. So we'll see what happens with The Last of Us. Well, it's so- just critically acclaimed, and then the fans come out and hate it so much, and then HBOs get scared, like yeah. we've seen these companies do. Well, I'm talking more of like a unifying... But the six or, or the seven, I don't think hurts it at all. I think oh. that would actually, I think that would be better. Well, I wonder how much of a fan base it has, regardless for the TV show. Like, do you think everyone that played Last of Us knows that there's a TV show? Of Last That's of Us also now? a good point. I think these companies get too caught up on fan bases and realizing that most of the general pop that you're selling this show to doesn't know what the fuck Last of Us is. Yeah. Well, you, you know, gotta, you're trying to get my sister to watch this HBO show. She doesn't know the game. Well, you got. I think HBO. They've had cases they where they good. could. They could compare and contrast and have uh, a appropriate comparison with, like, Watchmen, right? Right, yeah, How yeah. How many yeah. people came over because they're a fan of the comics, fan of the movie, or people are like, oh, I like HBO, I trust them, it looks interesting, let me give this a shot. Well, that has a bigger fan base, though. Like, you, you rattled off comics, it's got a, well, I, the TV it's show. It's not an apt comparison, but I think there's a, well, it's not a, like... There's more of a chance for it apples to do better, to apples, it's, but it's, you have something there where you can... What? See, the, I, I'm glad you brought up Watchmen because I'm thinking the controversy surrounding the lo, uh, uh, surrounding the Last of Us Part Two is going to be a Watchmen controversy, where you saw the fan ratings for Watchmen were in like the 40s or 50s because the Rorschach mask was representative of a white supremacy group. So automatically, people just threw out the entire show. They didn't they didn't want it that after happens? an episode. Oh yeah, look if you look that. at the Rotten Tomatoes Watchmen score, it's like 95 critics, 54 <laughs> fans. You know what's funny? I'm Wait. thinking that's what The Last of Us 2 is going to be. It's it's going to be a decision like that. So I wonder who who chooses where it goes the show wise. Like, can that is it Naughty Dog that has the rights to to The Last of Us? So did they pick HBO or could, or could they have picked a different streaming service? Could they have picked Hulu or Netflix? Well, yeah. it was and they pitched picked HBO? by uh, the guy who created Chernobyl. So it looks like in today's world that these people just kind of get in contact with each other. So it's and like the guy who directed Chernobyl played, for instance, played Last of Us and wanted to make a show on it. And then he went to HBO? Or does he, does he have to go to Naughty Dog, get their rights, and then go to HBO? Oh, yeah, yeah. You need Naughty Dog's rights. Okay. And it's a matter of who wants to adapt this. For a long time, it was um, it was Sony. the Sony, the movie studio, right. because Sony made the game. Um, no, no, well, they didn't make the game, but it came out on PS4. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the natural relationship. But, you know, Maisie Williams was rumored to play Ellie... That never kind of panned out, so I guess HBO swooped in behind closed doors, and yeah, uh, okay. Naughty Dog may have been shopping it around, but I- I'm glad it landed with a streaming service like this. Me too. Because a uh, miniseries just sounds so much better. Yeah. But let's move on to the next question here. Um, This one here from Wash Your Hands and Stay Away From Me at knob underscore 12. Now that Tom Brady and Gronk have left New England, what NFL team will Teddy be rooting for? Uh, I saw that one coming. <laughs> That's Patriots. Why That's why I'm coming. <laughs> we gave you, uh, well, I did at least, I gave you a, a pass to go back to the Titans. No, well, I, built, I built a relationship with the Patriots. I'm Are you staying there? Them. Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, right now in this moment, I'll give you a pass to go to the Bucs, but you can only do it right now. <laughs> I'm not going to the Bucs, no. No, he has to go back to the Titans. For a year. No. It's like, uh, what do they do in soccer when they put them on lease? When they <laughs> the lend players, players? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that happens. That's a, that's to unreal. me, that's hilarious. They I do wish it right, the man. Knicks would be doing that every year. They're like, Frank, get the fuck out I of wish me. every league did what the, what the Premier League does. I don't like that. I'm not a fan of the loaning. No, the loaning, not, not, right, no yeah. not the loaning. The teams. If if they, like the last team gets promoted out and like a G League team would come up. Too much money in it for uh, American sports. Yeah. Too much well, money. There's a crazy amount of money in and, and Premier League, though. That's well, now, every if you yeah, but demote the Bobcats to the G League, oh, excuse me, if you demote the Bo- Bobcats to the G League or the Hornets, then they're a billion-dollar entity. Yeah, I guess. You sound really upset. <laughs> I did. the notion of <laughs> it happening. Well, the thing is, soccer is so popular that even the, I guess, the second-tier league is yeah, they can make it in very, league. very popular. <laughs> in America, true. no one gives a shit about AAA baseball, the G League, or there isn't Love even, college football. Yeah, well, college, yeah, but. It's like the minor league. In a sense. Yeah. But you can't demote the lines. Well, you could. I think they <laughs> struggle, actually. Can Alabama beat the Browns? That <laughs> yeah, old? that's always the debate. Even though the Browns would crush Alabama. but Now they would. They're well, a good team. Well, even the worst team in the NFL would crush a college team. It's I don't know. See, with the NBA, I think it may be a bit different. I think because of the physicality between an NFL and a college team is so different that they would have no chance. But I think the best college team 
would have a chance against the worst NBA team. I in a seven so game Duke series. The Knicks. I think last year's opposite. Duke with Zion. <laughs> yeah, the Knicks are horrible. <laughs> they were horrible. I think it's opposite though. I you think, think it's, it's easier for the NFL? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not, dude. Do you have Dude, people? Best, best you have people so starting, much more one on one. You have people starting in Alabama that would never make it. That don't make it to the NFL. Every NFL team is a college all star team. Every yeah, that is true. There's there's I more guess. players too. It's just with the basketball at the end of the day, there's it's, more valuable zone in football than basketball. Well, basketball, it's, it's similar to hockey. Player. You know, like we were able to beat the mirror, uh, the Russia, t- the Russian team. It's because we just squeeze it. You know, it's just one of those sports where because we're America. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we beat the Russians. <laughs> I was going to say because you had Kurt Russell as a coach. <laughs> that is yeah, two good points. This question here from Leslie McWaters at Lady Ravenclaw. Good house. 90. Uh, who do you want to read Dune to you? <laughs> who, uh, is the uh, narrator good? On There's the like audiobook? seven of them. Oh, yeah. oh, what do they do? Characters? Yeah. That's oh, what that's makes it so much cool. better. I like that. It makes it yeah. easier for me to follow it. Star Wars does music for their books. Jeez. There's a battle. Awesome. You hear like pew, pew. When I listened to, um, yeah. I think it was the shot in English, it was the guy doing all the voices. Yeah, he was. It's pretty funny, but <laughs> <laughs> they do that in doing it. Like when uh, when Paul is fighting Gurney, like doing the training, they have like sword fights. Oh, you yeah, hear like ching, ching, ching. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. Who would I like to read? You know, I like I like the well, guy that have... does the uh, the the fucking forensic files. Well, they had st- there's a story the other day that? or a tweet I saw. It was somebody doing an audio book, and I'm like, wow, that's awesome. I forgot who it was. Just a ra- uh, random person or a celebrity? It was someone connected to the franchise, I think. Okay, yeah, it's like Roy Do- uh, Dotrice did or Dotrice, whatever his name was. Um, he was the the alchemist in mm-hmm. Game of Thrones. Peter Thomas. Okay, uh, he does forensic files. What does he sound like? I don't know. Soothing. <laughs> well, Army Hammer did the narration for the Call Me by Your Name audiobook. He's got a nice voice. Yeah, his voice was like cutting butter. So <laughs> was, that, that audiobook. You know, I have a uh, sleep book. app, and who's a uh, Jerome Flynn? Who's the guy that... Oh, Jerome Flynn, yeah. He does something with on the Calm, app. On the Calm app. Wait. Yeah, the Calm app. He's, yeah. Is he Jerome reads, Flynn the guy that Braun? does... He's Braun in Game of yeah, Thrones. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I was going to say. He, he reads the stories, yeah. right? <laughs> I love that dude. Uh, who who did one the other day? Eva Green. She's got a good one. Stephen Fry. I can't... I saw it, and I'm like, wow, that's a that's a, that's a sick audio book. Oh, this is a good question. Settle some bad blood here. Settle some debates. Kane at Kane the Stranger. Yes, I know Hit Teddy, and he never gave me back my Batman's owl. He's a filthy liar. I can I ask a question? I gave it back. Who actually won between you and Aaron and MLB? Also, give Aaron his towel. Which back. game? MLB the two games. I can attest to the fact of you not giving things back because you'll steal things from me and I'll. He just didn't find steal. Them. I left him. it at his house, and I, I, I know. I think his brother took. I took it. it from the beach, but I gave it back to you. You never gave it back. Yes, That's kind of stealing. Yeah. So he no hit you, huh? The second game, yeah. The first game is controversial. You're very controversial. The it second was, game though, um, was, it was what, 14, I can't hit Kluber, man. Fourteen innings, I think it was. Fifteen. 15. The first game? Second game. 15 innings. This is the no-hitter? S- second game was no-hitter. First game was 15 No, the innings. first okay, game was 15 okay. innings. I went deep first inning, and then he scored in like the eighth. Wow. And then... 1-1? One, one. Yeah. <laughs> he sc- What, you scored, right, in the f- top of the 15th? I didn't score, no. You scored bottom, and I turned the game off. So, yeah, I won. I don't know. What was the controversy? Oh, it was the tag. In the 13th inning, I, I uh, tagged home, and I scored, but it registered as an out to the game, but it had 2-1 me in the box score. And the game kept going on. No, that didn't happen. No, this is terrible podcasting. Let's move on. <laughs> he, you trying to find the finer details of your he was coming. He was coming MLB. home. He was coming home. I just wanted to hear about the no hitter. He was I, coming I, I home. G- he no hit me. What do, what do you want to hear? No. He no hit me. Yeah, but I wanted. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted okay. to get upset. You rubbing it in. I don't want the finer details of no, your no, fifteen. No, no, but this is the one I do because I won. This is what he got mad at. It was a bang bang play at home. Wants to hear this. And my guy tagged him, but they said. But he thought he was safe. Cause I they, was safe. I didn't think I was safe. The score said 2-1. It was me. a bang-bang play. But the game kept going on. Out on Makes sense, right? They called him out in the game. It's right? like hitting a home run out of the park, and it just zoomed. It like it just suction cut back to the guy. But then I walked him out. off the next inning, so it's not a big deal. Next question. And then I know hit him the next Next game. question. <laughs> I actually have a good question here. Uh, the King of the North. Well, I heard you threw 80 balls on 20 strikes. That's not true. I think I have it, right? I think I took a picture of it. So he so played like he did in Smash lot. Brothers. Yeah. Highs I didn't throw 80 balls. Let's, let, me, let's me and you duke it out. Teddy, that means you would have walked. Like, I swung at all of them. Yeah, because you... Because <laughs> you don't throw strikes. You are the most frustrating person to play video games with. You know what's frustrating about Aaron? How did I How did I throw 80 balls with 17 strikeouts in one walk? How did I How did I do that, I'm Ted? saying I swung at balls He's in the just, dirt. <laughs> He's that bad? 
Hey, if it works, it works, right? No, because he's using a 99 Kluber. Well, the thing with what's it would better players. You wouldn't in the fucking piss game. me off in Get video games. You wouldn't piss me off in video games so much if you acted like you didn't care. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, what because you your entire play style is predicated on you winning no matter what. It's not about having fun. It's finding something to do that will increase your chances at winning. But well, on the other end, it's is there another way to you play? Act, but you act like it, no. It's but not. you can play to win, but also kind of just <laughs> have fun in with the it. spirit of the, it's like when teams, what do they call it? Um, in soccer, when everyone defends, uh, park the bus. Park the bus. Yeah, you're park the buser. You park the bus. When you find like a moment to park the bus, you'll <laughs> park the bus. But then when you lose, I didn't really care about winning anyway. You guys take this too seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but That's when why, Teddy, yeah, but when he hit the home run, he almost blew the fucking speaker out of my mic. <laughs> but no, no. But when it's someone just say, yes, let's go. Someone it's like, like yes, you know Jordan let's fist go! bumping after the Cavs when he's shot. Talking. That's Aaron after he wins every yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, that that too. <laughs> uh, when he's talking shit, it's satisfying to beat him. I wasn't talking shit. Well, I was you're talking like the Larry shit Bird because you were talking shit to too. me. You are good at talking shit. You get under people's skin. And I was also hammered when we played, and I still won. This is a great question here from the King of the North at Dr. Jax Knoll. Last question here. I spit well, on you. Question. <laughs> <Ronan>. what? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, in this? That's a death In the age of Ronan? Yeah, that's, that's a death threat. That's a hate crime. <laughs> I looked the poll coming you up. You might so. be a bioterrorist. <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, I think splitting Dune into two films is awesome and exciting. Considering how expensive the film is, what happens if it bombs? What Don't might could happen with part two? Follow up. Where do you expect the break in films to be plot wise? Two very interesting questions here. So I'm six hours into the book. Yeah, don't say anything about the plot, but just I'm six hours into the book. General guess. And they're at the dinner where don't, Paul calls out the Don't banker. talk about it. It's really not a spoiler. No, He's it's not, not spoiling much. I'm He's so, at I'm a trying to dinner. I'm trying to gauge where I am. Like where halfway would be. I think halfway would be maybe when uh, I, 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 I can't even tell you. I don't, I don't know the plot. I can't even tell. If it, but if the first one bombs, what's bombing? What's this budget going to be like? If it's a $250 million budget, and it does Blade Runner. It doesn't make a profit. There's no way that this would ever be greenlit for a sequel. That would be bombing. Part one is 250 or the whole thing. Well, the, th- the thing is, are they going to film them back to back? Yeah. If, I think that's... I think you got to film the whole thing and cut it up, like what they did with Endgame. No, it wasn't filmed as one movie. Oh, it wasn't? No, no. It was filmed as two separate movies, but they were done back to back. Oh, no shit. Well, Lord of the Rings, kind of, they just... Same thing. They fucking... They did film it as one movie, right? Didn't they? I'm not sure the exactly like how like when it's the production of it, but they, I mean, they came out uh, year after year. Yeah, <laughs> those fucking massive movies. So they just worked nonstop. With Dune, that's tough. I think if you're maybe they took some insurances out, like we are going to do it back to back, and so regardless of what happens, it's coming out the no box what. office. It's going to come like, out. Hey, we already made it. <laughs> Let's put it out. <laughs> you gotta put everything into marking this film. Blade Runner, I don't know how much they went, went into marketing. I think they got well, enough people criticized. Man. It was a lot of marketing, but they just marketed it wrong because nobody kind of knew what it was. Yeah. And well, I always say, well, that's why you go to the film. You you go to, you go watch the film, find out what it is. But at the end of the day, I think Blade Runner did a really poor job of I think setting too, up what anybody was doing in those movies. Has there been a movie that bombed, though, with this kind of cast? <laughs> with this big of, this great of a cast? That would bomb like this? Yeah, I, you think there's so much going for it. The way it, you need to get some marketing geniuses behind this because you have so many different demographics you can hit with Zendaya and Chalamet and Josh Brolin and Stellan Skarsgård. You can bring in everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can market this. They should market this as the next Game of Thrones, but in a movie. Oh, you like Game of Thrones? Come see it at the movies. They I shouldn't th- shy away from that. It all depends how everything kind of either figures itself out or what the world is going to be like by December because it could either if it gets delayed or something like that that can hurt it but it could kind of like financially speaking just everything work out perfectly not saying like this is good or anything but for just strictly financial people, reasons people wanted to go back to the movies where man. right when this ends and you have this massive movie that people yeah. are talking about with this crazy cast and everyone's dying to get out of their house and go back yeah. to the theater it just could be all these variables come together where this movie does maybe like something like an avatar not breaking the record, but maybe one and a half billion dollars. No, could you? Where just un- unforeseen, this just mammoth comes through. Away. They should drop a trailer as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. They should get this thing revving. Right now, we're not everyone's moving. home, bro. Yeah. yeah. We're not moving our date. Here's a trailer. Here's another 20 images. 
and here's what it's about. And, and you here's also, also an HBO show. But apparently. also, what I just said could also work against it because all these movies that got moved, they're going to need a new slot. Now the December market is crowded. And when it premieres, there's also going to be four other choices, different genre, genres that people might choose to see over this film. And then it's like, could they, and then I wonder if they'll pull the, you know, let's put it back in, let's put it into January, February, where no one's watching, you know, where it can do good there, but then not do till good coming, like, Oscar season. And well, you guys made me so happy, and then you just made me sad. Why? Because we're like, oh, there's no movies coming out, we're going to have a great marketing push. I was just going to bring that up too, Aaron. But now you bring up the point that every movie might be in December. Now. People so need to. <laughs> what's going to happen yeah. here, Oracle? Something's got to give. Why don't you just give me the good scenario? I think. I think either way, even if it doesn't doesn't make money, and because that happens, they could just be like, "Well, look, we could it couldn't nothing." They have thrived. a lot of they have yeah. a lot going. There for are it. a lot of yeah. excuses <laughs> that can be made. So, I think. Where do you think it, it would have the best chance? Be, I, be, beginning of the year or end of the year? I think December, where it lines up, where. It's the only thing really playing that weekend as far as big blockbusters go, and it's right at a time where people are ready to go back to the theater and everything kind of blew, uh, passed by. If it gets like a 2015 clean December where only Sisters is coming out with <laughs> Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, yeah. then I think, yeah, that's the best place for it because you December has become like, I don't know, it's it's become synonymous with big blockbuster movies because of Star Wars. But that Fair. also can lead to a big opening weekend or opening weekend or opening week but if all these films are getting pushed back then it's not going to have a clear path to get multiple weekends of winning the box office like avatar did because that was lucky enough where literally nothing came out after avatar so it was dominating week after week at the box office so if you have that initial december weekend all to yourself you might make big money then but then next week um jumanji three (laughs) <laughs> what do you think you know, The Rock's been doing this Eternals, entire time? <laughs> Eternals got pushed back. So that's coming out the weekend after. And this movie got pushed back, so it's coming out the weekend after that. So I think it's going to be a crowded box office after the initial release, which can hurt it. Like, what came out in January this year? You guys, you guys recall anything? A big movie? I can't remember. Gentlemen. Was it, was, did The Irishman come out this year? Was that, that was last year, right? Yeah, that was yeah. last year. The Invisible Man. Did you ever see that? Yeah. It's good, right? Yeah, I liked it. Well, what was the last big January movie that came out that good like, or still had the hype? You yeah, mean like, in like, general, like, like, like yeah, like for the Oscars, that still had the hype. Oh, January movies and rarely ever happens for yeah? Yeah. for Oscar hype. I think Annihilation was probably the best movie in recent memory that premiered in January, but yeah. that didn't have any. Did it get anything for like special effects? I no. don't think it did. I think no. it got c- shut out completely. Get Out was early February. Get Out was February. So was Black Black Panther, Panther was February. Okay. So it's hard. I mean, Get Out and Black Panther were just. Those are movies that kind of stayed and like were stayed relevant through time. So even when Oscar season was coming along, those movies were very much in the cultural zeitgeist. When you have like we saw with uh, this relates to another Jordan Peele movie, um, Us. Us. People were saying Lupita Nyong'o should have got nominated, and probably so because that was a fantastic performance. But Us didn't have that lasting impact. So by the time Oscars, yeah season came along we've had other performances fresher in memory so what kind of got left what is the there. cutoff for the oscars for the for the year because is, is there a cutoff or does it have to be before december certain, 31st but right before and then what when, when's the oscars you see a lot of february you well be, it's for the previous year oh uh, okay. so right now we're in oscar right, right, season right. for the 2021 show but you okay. see a lot of times films will get n- nominated but they'll have a limited release and won't get a bigger bigger release until january so even yeah, though yeah. The first time the film may be available to you is in January. There's been limited uh, screenings and press screenings that kind of make it eligible. That happens to me every year with an anime film because they're always released in Japan a year before, and then we get them like a year later. So I'll always put like a 2019 film on my 20... That's what I did. I put a 2019 because we got in 20... No, it was a 2018 film we got you in 2019. Yeah. But um, for t- <laughs> I mean, we have to wait and see for Tenet too. It's now Tenet. They're, they're making, saying, uh, yeah, they're going to make that announcement soon. That's going to be the big domino. Uh, Dune Imagine still they is sell safe. That to fucking Netflix. Well, I think no, Nolan would. <laughs> I know. Go fucking Barry at I the end hope. of season two. Um, just Warner Brothers, like <laughs> who's head of Warner Brothers? Bugs, Bugs Bunny, right? <laughs> um, they they would definitely push it back. But if if Tenet's, I don't, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Like these corporations are talking to the government. Like, what do you think? Yeah, uh, if certain states aren't going to be opening up as quickly because we ain't New York's going to be the last state I think that opens up. Um, but we're already seeing certain states are opening up restaurants and 
salons and well, stuff I saw like a tweet that. Twenty percent of the domestic box office is from California and New York. Right. And with California, the situation in California doesn't seem to be as messy as it is over here. Yeah, twenty percent that's that's a lot, man, when you start counting in the millions. And I the think billions. So, yeah. That's that's true. I mean it could have just been a random tweet, but Well the amount of people that I talk to, you know, that message the channel and say or that we follow on Twitter, hey, I'm not going to get this movie for another three months because I live somewhere without a major chain, mm-hmm. you know, without a major theater chain. So uh, that makes sense. We have one of the questions here that we got on email was, what's the best theater on Long Island? There are so many of them. <laughs> it's like, correct. We have so many fucking yeah. options. I think we kind of take that for granted sometimes. What's the best one, Farmingdale? <laughs> I like, uh, yeah, United Artists, right? Yeah. The one closest to us on yeah. Long Island. It's a solid theater. It's never... Sometimes it has power outages, but the Deer Park one is a good theater, but there's no recliners. It pisses no, me yeah. off. I like the theater itself. Good theater. It's weird. There's always like there's pros and cons. To everything. I mean, the one closest to us is probably the best because it does have an IMAX and it does have recliners. But the other one, the multiplex, sometimes the sound is god awful. <laughs> right. Look, the multiplex looks the best, but sometimes the sound is terrible. I think Levitown the other one's a good I think one the too. Regal and the um, and the outlets. I think it has the best sound and picture, but no recliners. Yeah, it's Yankee Stadium. Oh, That's seriously. That's what Jamie called it, our friend Jamie. <laughs> Regal, I also like the the outlets because it's like you're going to the outlets, you know? Yeah. It's like okay. a night out at the, the pictures. <laughs> Every time I pass by, there's a Johnny Rockets. I'm always <laughs> like, we should go to Johnny Rockets one day before a movie. Never do it, but Never I like do. the yeah. idea. That you I, always say it when you go through. You know, next time I'll come, yeah. come earlier. I like the <laughs> idea that I could if I want. <laughs> I hate missing previews not because i want to see the previews but something about you not, are very annoying about not, i try and get there right as the movie starts not you <laughs> me too yeah because it takes yeah. me a minute to settle down so if i'm getting in as the movie starts the first five to ten movies of the movie I, i'm not well yeah you, you have to get in there stretch your feet out untie your shoes undo the buckle <laughs> no, undo you know, the buckle. <laughs> i don't want to settle in and <laughs> get ready and just not feel like i'm rushing i know what you're saying yeah I don't know. I I thrive in a rush. <laughs> I like the rush. There's not, nothing worse than coming to a movie and it's already been on for five minutes. Like when right I saw now, Knives Out, I went to the wrong theater. I got my popcorn and drink. I went up to the ticket taker, and he's like, "It's not working." I look. I'm like, "Oh fuck! It's the wrong movie." <laughs> kids around, but ready to see Frozen. I don't care about them. I'm gonna curse. Fuck them, kids. Sped all the way across through through towns, twenty minutes away, and I got there just in time. The movie just started, but it took me like ten minutes to settle down and settle in. It was, like, it was the worst. Right yeah. now, I told Elena I'm on my way home 10 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, boy. So, so now like, I got to get in my car and rush home. That's a thrill, you know? Well, Ted, we won't keep you any longer. Thank you no. for listening, guys, <laughs> to the Nerd 2 Podcast. Hope you like this episode. Ted's big return. Uh, hopefully, he'll be back next week if everything's okay. Well, yeah. you misses. tell me because it seems like you guys are in like that fucking bubble, like in Smash, the, the block well, bubble. Well, see, Ted, <laughs> that's the thing with Ted. He's taking it personally that we're taking precautions. It could be anybody. It's not just because it's you. I, I feel mean, like yes, I'm being alienated. We have somebody else sitting a little closer, maybe. I feel like I'm being alienated. I feel like you guys, you see me and just see like a Leper. green smug around me. Leper. We see the little Rona. Yeah. Balls flying around <laughs> you. Well, you were the flies. one that, like, be- like a week or two before all this happened, you were- had the flu. I had it in January, guy. Was it the flu? Yeah. Right before Did this all happened. Did you get your antibody test back? Yeah, I'm getting the results tomorrow. Oh, back? No. Yeah. I, th- I thought you said you get the antibody test. Tomorrow I'll get the results. Yeah, this kid's always sniffling and sneezing on the pod. He's like, why don't you guys want me here? <laughs> Turn this global pandemic. <laughs> I think you guys are taking it out of abortion. Well, guys, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Yeah, share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Just kidding. Don't do that. Don't share it with my family. Because I get embarrassed. But, uh, yeah, any last thoughts here? Aaron, Teddy? Uh, no, just stay safe. You know. Hey, guys, thank you for watching this video. And, of course, we would like to thank our Patreon supporters. Without you guys, Nerd Soup wouldn't be Nerd Soup. Seriously, your support is what keeps the fridge full. So thank you once again for your support. If you are interested in supporting Nerd Soup through Patreon, visit our page and check out the different rewards we offer to our fans. If not, then no problem. We appreciate anyone who takes time from their day to watch our videos. So thank you to each and every one of you out there watching, and remember to like and share this video. And hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like it. Or don't. 